Yeah, yeah. Well, by, by the way, maybe this, this, this chick right here, yeah, you're, we're, we're totally together. We're totally hooking it up. You didn't see that? Oh, that was a deleted scene from the first movie. <laughs> we met We met at yeah, the I wedding. Yeah, had to get deleted because they need more wedding footage. Yeah, no, no, no. We met at the wedding. Like, we were at the reception, and, you know, I saw her, and she saw me, and, well, they saw, there was the slow dance going on, and they, things worked out, you know. <laughs> yeah, things just worked out. I got my fishing, I got my beer, daughters moved out. Life is sweet. And he can always have a new daughter now. Right, yeah, I'm gonna have a new daughter, one that fucking tells me the truth. <laughs> and who isn't a vampire. Yeah, would it, yeah, yeah. Would it really have killed her just to say I'm a vampire? Cause yeah, really, I was wondering that too. Who the fuck I, is this I guy also gonna didn't tell understand me? like why does she have to why do they have? Why do they have to fake their deaths? Because like, well, why? The, the reason is like, well, the Volturi will like if anyone knows that vampires exist, the Volturi will kill them. But how would anyone know? Who the fuck is that police officer going to tell? That would well, like, yeah, because I mean, like, he's not going to put his daughter in danger, and mm -hmm. he's seen werewolves, so whatever. He was he did the, the and the Cullens are constantly around human beings. Yeah. They're allowed they're constantly to, around people. They're allowed to go to high school. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's, yeah. it's clear that humans can... Like, seriously, Bella, they're like, okay, Bella can Bella can hang out with you, but as long as you make her a vampire, and do they ever check, the, check up on her? No. No. Not ever. No, no. So, like, I, like why, did, why does she have to tell Billy Turk that you must dash dad that she, she... Why do they have to look that she's dead? I don't... And, and again, like what you just said, like, he knows Jacob's a werewolf. He seems fine with it. Yeah, he actually <laughs> seems, in uh, comparison to how I deal with it, he seems pretty chill. Yeah, he's like, oh, but okay. Yeah. I guess what they're talking about is like, well, Michael Sheen can read everyone's, he can read every memory that anyone's ever had by a touch. So like... The next mustache dad with a pen. <laughs> by the way... They establish really the reason they're getting allies is because like the Volturi aren't going to ask questions. They're just going to come and kill us, right? Uh -huh. So like, what's the first thing that happens when the Volturi finally come? They march forward in a line and then they stop and they start asking questions. Yeah. They're like, "Well, well, Cullens, I see you've brought the abomination with you," and they're like, and and uh, Carlisle's like. We've brought all these witnesses who will tell you that this child is not the abomination you speak of. And he's like, oh, really? Well, why don't you come, come here, here, child? Yeah, come here, child. Ah! <laughs> so, like, he's... It really, it seems like they, they keep building up the whole time, like, oh, these vulture you're going to kill first. They're going to ask questions later. Yeah. They're coming. They're going to come and they're going to fucking kill us. And then... When Carlisle makes a perfectly reasonable request to have a hearing, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. He's uh -huh. like, yeah, come on and let me read your mind and I'll see if you're telling... And then he reads his mind and sees he's telling the truth. Now, he's, got, he's pretty much dedicated to killing them anyway, but like in terms of establishing whether or not he's going to give them a trial, he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He straight up does. Yeah, he's totally willing to hear them out yeah. after all this fear that he that he wouldn't. But you get this impression like the Vulture are gonna fucking rock in like the baseball furies and just kill everyone. And they don't. They appear in their fruity fucking robes and then they hear the oh, call. It was playing it was playing, but there was one scene where it was playing like part of like a little synth score going on. <laughs> but I was laughing so much at Michael every time they panned to Michael Sheen. Like, everyone is walking towards the Cullens, like, all super serious and badass. Like, there's this, mm -hmm. like, Carmina Varana stuff playing in the background. And then you cut to Michael Sheen, who is, like, smiling like he's so turned on. <laughs> no, really, like, like, he is so enjoying himself. Like, everyone's all geared up for a fight. Like, the other guys, uh -huh. like, like, the other two guys in the Vulturi, like, the long-haired younger guy and the long-haired kind of blase guy they're like they're all yeah. grim faced and like we're gonna get some fucking violence going on here in a mm -hmm. minute and then you cut to Michael Sheen and was like oh this is so much fun <laughs> I should have brought appetizers <laughs> oh I should play something 
I should I know, let's play charades, everyone. Yeah, yeah, in the calendar. I just... love these calm little moments before the storm. Yeah, it reminds me of Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is this it's such fantastic. a quaint place we've chosen for the final battle, Carlisle? It's so very bourgeois. How do you say bourgeois? It's, and it's, he's so turned on by it. And yeah, it's fantastic. He looks, what does the psychic tell him? Like something like, my God, no matter what we say, you're going to try to kill us. Yeah. Yeah. But he's oh, like, yes, I am. He's like, oh, I see you've chosen a studio for our final battle. The map painting is so quaint. It has that certain <laughs> je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I must say, I miss the tiny little castle from the previous map painting. Oh, oh, that was a lovely set we made. Uh, the little straw huts. It was so medieval. <laughs> By the way, there was this one scene that I laughed my ass off. Like, okay... Alice has, like, given her testimony, like, she's given her memories to the fucking Michael Sheen guy, and she turns to talk to somebody else. Now, if you paid attention to Michael Sheen, who is out of focus slightly, (laughs) because the action is on Alice and whoever she's talking to, if you watch Michael Sheen in the background, he is so mugging for the camera. He is. He is looking right at the camera... Mincing like a gay man. I See, noticed it too. He's like, I he's did. like, and it was it was on the side of the screen that I normally wouldn't have been look, looking at because it's just because there's like far off there's order. action. But every time he was on screen, I was watching him. Yeah, because I couldn't draw my eyes away from the guy. But like, okay, uh, like like she's up here and she's talking to this other dude. She's like, they're not gonna let us leave. They're gonna attack us no matter what. And like in the background. Fucking Michael Sheen is doing this. He's like, ooh. <laughs> oh, this he is... He totally is. He totally is. The, the plotting. I love it. <laughs> oh, we're going to have so much fun. I do love a party. Yes, I, I never get out of the house. This is so <laughs> wonderful. It's a party. Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. I... I I feel like a little girl again. <laughs> oh, who wants a snowball fight? Oh, let's play snowball fight. What do you say, Wayne? Everybody, I feel like dancing. Oh, tag your it. On the DVD where they're having a snowball fight with each other. I am buying that fucking in, in all the fucking faces. Oh, you put that snowball in the freezer, you cheating bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs> oh, you're bad. You're so bad. You're so naughty. Oh, we'll have to talk about this later. <laughs> oh, oh, that tickles. No, stop it. <laughs> oh, but let's just call the whole thing off. Let's go. Let's go back home and watch some. Uh, let's go watch Sex in the City. I've got the whole. I've got the whole series on DVD, sweetie. <laughs> ah, I love this show. <laughs> let's do each other's nails and tell fortunes. Oh, oh, the TV trailer. The TV trailer for it that has a quote from a critic that says. With a wild twist ending that you won't believe. A twist ending. <laughs> yeah. You, I can't even explain this twist ending where, like, oh, they have this big. huge, they have this huge battle scene, and then they go, "Never mind." It was all. <laughs> oh my god! What a twist! I'm like, I, I, it actually got me. It did because I didn't know how the book goes, but I booed my ass off. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else was like, "Woo!" and he's going, "Boo!" Boo, yeah, they were cheering. Audience. There was so much kind of groaned. Yeah. Ours didn't. Ours was cheering. No, our, our audience was like, yes! Yay, nobody got their head pulled off. Carlisle's alive! <laughs> yeah, ours, like, it was a mixture of laughter, and some people kind of groaned, which was odd, because we were in, 
it wasn't like we were in a theater where it was all people like like us to like be like Jake and Jilly. No, and, this no, it was a bunch of Twihards. They no, this, several times during the movie. No, this audience was firmly in the pocket of the Twilight fandom. They like were, we were the yeah. only ones who were like fucking amused. Well, the guy moment. next to me was actually asleep. Like, oh, the really? The next to me fell asleep. The dude behind me had his bare feet on the back of my chair. So there were at least a couple of guys who didn't want oh, me there. Perfect. Because, you know, nice. like, I was telling you, like, he's like, this movie's going to be huge. Like, we're, we have to go there early because we're not going to get a seat because every woman in the world is going to drag their boyfriend to this movie. And you're like, what? And, right? Yeah, I'm not I'm not used to that. I did, I've not seen a full theater in so long. Like, uh, the last movie I went to was Looper, and it was empty. There were, like, you, are such, you are such an anomalous woman that has not even read or heard, like, not really, really heard of what goes on in the Twilight movies. Yeah. What the hell is this Twilight shit? <laughs> but it was actually good to get a fresh perspective because I know everything that's going on in these movies, and mm -hmm. like I was just wondering, like, are you are you gonna be completely snowed by what's going on in this movie? There was so much where I just was staring at. I was like, seriously, what the fuck? There's so many times when I just leaned over and I was like, what the fuck? But what the fuck? And there's so many Did times really like happen? for as much as they use the super speed they have, they just as conveniently forget they have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Like when when Jacob is running away from the the war, the battle, the vampire battle. Yeah, I'm like, did they forget they have super speed? Yeah, eventually one dude did. Chase, yeah, but only one. Then there's one guy, like this black guy in the Vulturi, who's chasing them. But the thing here's the other thing I noticed that was like the black guy as he's chasing Jacob through the woods, he's breathing hard. Yeah, yeah, he's panting as he runs. He's like, huh, huh, huh. Oh, he's like, I need to breathe. Did you forget that? Yeah, I was like, they just established they don't need to fucking breathe. And this guy's like, no, no, I'm going to get you. He's pretending to breathe just in case Billy Burke walks behind. Yeah, they really, they seriously should have paid that off at some point because they don't pay it off. Why did you introduce this character if you're not going to do anything with it? Because I really was. I was like, okay. Any screenwriter worth his salt is going to finally pay off the fact that Billy Burke puts this together. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, uh -huh. you know what? My daughter's a vampire. I don't care. I'm going to protect her. So, like, somebody is going to have Bella pinned down, is about to twist her head off, and then a shotgun goes off and kills the vampire. And you're going to see Billy Burke goes, I love you, Bella, sweetie. Oh, that would have been awesome, actually. That would have been really cool. Because if you know anything about screenwriting... would have been amazing. If you know anything about screenwriting, you go... Is this scene necessary to the movie? And anytime you ask that about Billy Burke's character, the answer is no. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason for him to be there. It's like he's only there just to be faithful to the books to prove that Bella actually has, you know, human parents who like, care you know, about her. You don't even fucking establish it unless you can use it. Mm -hmm. And by, oh, I remember the. You remember the guy who's the last airbender? <laughs> yeah. Who, yeah. It's three quarters of the way through the fight. And then he looks around and he's like, Oh, wait. Oh, right. I have complete mastery over all four elements. I have these magic powers. I totally forgot somehow. I can split the fucking earth open and swallow my enemies whole. I can cleave the earth in twain. Why didn't I remember this? I can literally cause an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, I can cause an earthquake that will devour the entire Vulturi army. Shit, I should have thought of that before they... Oh, I'm stupid. God damn it. I'm <laughs> so, uh, my bad, guys. I fucked sorry, up. Sorry, sorry. I swear they were even using some of the same map paintings from Last Airbender. <laughs> <laughs> they, they I was waiting for him to do the Tai Chi. Like movie. But, like, what What the fuck good is he? Like, like, okay, he can control wind. He can control fire. Why doesn't he, like, like make Why doesn't it... he light all of the oh, bad vampires on fire? Why doesn't he, like, make his hands into flamethrowers? Yeah. Why doesn't he make a wind that's so strong it blows the bad vampires away? Yeah, as they're running at each other, he could have just gone, whoosh! Why doesn't he turn the snow that's under their feet into ice and, like, fucking you know, freeze their like feet? torches with them anyway, because they'll be like... Like, when, uh, when yeah, one of them gets decapitated, they'll be like... Ooh. That's where did she get that torch? Yeah. Where did they get the torch? Why did they need the torch? Do they need to be extra dead? You've just pulled their head off. Do yeah. they need to be more dead? Well, than the man? thing is, like, Michael Sheen's head was still alive. Like, if you, like, just squished them back together, would they just reattach? Like, dead he's like, or? He's like, oh, you twisted my head off. That is so gauche. 
<laughs> bad form, bad form. Unoriginal. I love bad form, old man. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Seen this. This is so 1999. Very retro, oh, but I'm disappointed in you, Edward. Get on the fire in the flashback. Mm-hmm. But, like, uh, here's the other option. Like, he can control water, okay? Why does he not, yeah. like, melt the water under their feet? Because they're on a frozen lake. Yeah, you could have just sent them all down. Send them into the... And I'm not the only guy who thinks... Like, okay, you've got the two Brazilian chicks who can make... They've established with the powers they can make anyone see what they want. Yeah. So why don't they make... Why doesn't she make all the Vulturi blind? Yeah, they established they can do that to their own people. They you've can got, yeah. it on the bad guys. You've got Harpo. You've got Harpo who can, his power is emotion control. He can make anyone feel any emotion they want. Why doesn't he make them feel complete crippling apathy? Or calmness. Even. Or calmness. And it's established, too, that they don't even have to be touching them in order to do right. that. Right. Yeah, yeah, they don't need to be near. And, like, you can't even give me, like, oh, they can't do that. Because Bella manages to transmit her power over, like, a hundred yards of distance to cover the yeah. entire vampire coven that they've got. You can't tell me that fucking Harpo, over like the 300 years that he's been alive, can't project his emotional control to more than one person at a time. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that. No, no, no. Not, not at all. As quickly as Owen, I love her learning how to do that too, using Edward as a, as a guinea pig. Um, but this one better work, Bella. Do they I put the juice up to full power? It's almost <laughs> like it's almost like they turn it's almost like they turn the vampires into the X Men. Yeah, yeah. Kind because of. their vampires, yeah. are, their their powers are completely random. Like one guy controls mm -hmm. the elements. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like one and guy. You mentioned Airbender too. I lean over to Jake and I'm like. He's a fucking bender. Yeah. He is like, yeah, without, I too. Like, I was without, like, it's a waterbender, what? Without even trying, he's like surpassed on the last airbender in like every respect. Mm -hmm. What is, what mm -hmm. is Carlisle's superpower? Does anyone know? I, maybe he doesn't have one. He had, no, everyone has one. They established that. Like, we all have our His gifts. His superpower is he spells Carlisle with an S. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's that he can wear like a cravat. Like, he wears like, you know how that guy in Scooby Doo, the blonde guy, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. always has like that neckerchief. <laughs> That's his powers. That in the in 2012, he can still pull off the neckerchief. <laughs> That's a good power to have. My only power is <laughs> the power of style. You, you, hey, if you could have that power, you take it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I would. Because you, you, you have the power of wearing a sports jacket at all times. I know, right? Yeah. I wish I had that power. I can't wear sports. would grow like crazy. Yeah, I know. I I don't know what uh, Carlisle's wife, the the dark haired chick. I don't know yeah. what her power is. She doesn't do very much. She doesn't do anything. She just she like looks at Carlisle like she's worried. Yeah, she and that's her entire thing. She gives him concerned looks and pats his arm a lot. Yeah. So like when he gets yeah. his head twisted off, she's like. Yeah, she looks. She looks mildly sh shocked, like you'd look if you know you got mud splashed on your favorite shirt. You remember at the end when it turns out nothing actually happens. That yeah, the two the Russian point. guys, the two the two stereotypically Russian dudes, who are like looking for nuclear vessels. Yeah, we came here looking for nuclear vessels. We also came here to fight the Volturi. <laughs> they come there and they're like, the only reason they came here is to fight the Volturi, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when it turns out nothing happens at the end, they're like, what, we're not going to fight Volturi? And everyone's like, no. And they're like, what? We ran all the way from Russia for this <laughs> crap? <laughs> Fuck you guys! And then they run off. Yeah, they just leave. Now, what, you know, who knows what they'll do now. But yeah, the, <laughs> the Volturi run off. Back like, to their modeling job. Yeah, the Volturi run off back to their... Back to their runway jobs in Milan. But I was like, you know how yeah. this really should end? Like how this really brilliantly would end? Is the Volturi run off and everyone's celebrating their victory. And then the Volturi come from behind Sir and Gordon. kill them all. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Like they just, they're, all, they're all doing their little Ewok dance. Yeah. They're, they're all like, yay, we, yeah. scored, we scared the Volturi off. 
who then, just when they went out of sight just circled around the forest <laughs> and then jumped them from behind mm -hmm. and like twist half their fucking heads off before they know what's going on yeah. and then you go the end like why wouldn't they try it like I, obviously the the main Volturi guy knows the future because Alice has just shown him well, but he that, doesn't, know. that doesn't show him that he can't he knows the future different. he knows the future if he attacks her right there and yeah then. exactly Nothing at all yeah. since he can't try it again another time. But he doesn't know that if he circles around and takes them from behind, they won't win. Mm -hmm. In fact, they are so oblivious to the idea that they might actually, like, come back, which is what I would do. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as I was out, uh -huh. if I was Michael Sheen and I was out of eyesight, first I would have sex with one of the guys. <laughs> the second thing I would do is, like, okay, mm, that was fun. <laughs> now... That was pure delight, Sebastian. Now let's let's run a half mile back behind them and charge them and then screw them. <laughs> we'll oh, they'll be so very stunned. We'll pull their little heads off like Barbie dolls. We'll kill them and bugger them. <laughs> Probably not necessarily, not necessarily in that order. Like the, the, the psychics, it, it, like when it's when it's when Michael Sheen's like, oh my, and like when it shows that like he will die in that particular incident if it happens. It, but no, it would no. be fantastic if, if he still did it anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I do love no, it it show. Well. So he has, is dead. He's like, oh, that was a fantastic show you put on, Alice. Let's do it. In for a penny, in for a pound. Oh! Like they say. Yes. <laughs> and besides, Flash forward, yeah. plus, plus, now that he knows what's going to happen, wouldn't he therefore change what he's going to do? He yeah, now knows yeah. their powers. Yeah, he knows. That's true. He now he knows every scenario he can. Now, counter. yeah, he knows the scenario where he loses. So wouldn't he do something different? Mm -hmm. We're like, yeah, okay. Like for instance, for instance, he sees Bella. Shielding all the vampires from Dakota Fanning's pain thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. what if he just fucking jacked Alice in the face and is like, everyone kill Bella, that bitch. <laughs> and then they they Bella. all charge. Then they all charge Bella at once. Mm -hmm. They tear her apart, and all of a sudden, their huge advantage is gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about this, Stephanie. This is the. Problem. I don't. I don't think she read like the Art of War before writing this. So this is the problem when you introduce a character that can see everything that happens in the future, because seeing everything that happens in the future changes what you're going to do, which changes what happens in the future. Mm -hmm. And when you have a character like Michael Sheen in this movie, who pretty much looks for any excuse to kill anybody. Maggie Grace at the end, oh my dear, you got some information wrong. It really didn't result in anyone dying. Kill her! <laughs> wouldn't he have noticed, he by the way... He excuse to really kill anybody. Wouldn't he have noticed, by the way, when he grabbed her hands? Because he can see, his powers, he can see every thought and every memory mm -hmm. that has ever crossed yeah. your mind. Now, that was in a previous movie, uh -huh. so you may not have seen that, because that's what he does. That's what I heard. Okay, so we can see every memory that you've ever had. If he, why doesn't he like grab Maggie Grace's hand and he says, "My dear, you were a mile away." Yeah. How the hell do you? How the hell do you know what you saw? That could have been anybody. What could have been anybody? Tell that that was somebody fucking map painting. Well, but by the way, what was she doing there? Why was she there in the first? Why was she on that fucking hill watching them? Yeah. Why was she there? How did she get there? When did she show up? What was she intending to do when she got there? Because the only other time I remember seeing her, and I, I, I might be wrong, but the only time I ever remember seeing her in the others was in the wedding in the other one. Yeah. But here's an even simpler question. Okay. You're Michael Sheen, and you're done having sex with the other two guys in the Volturi. <laughs> this... <laughs> Sold. <laughs> You're done. Okay. 